La 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 la. Sorry, what you were saying? I was, <laughs> I was, I was saying. Uh, All right, ma'am. Right. There we are. <laughs> I was saying as soon as you're out of that protected area, you're a hero. You, I mean, the kid's waiting up Come in. outside the studio. <laughs> Come in. We're not doing anything important. <laughs> Just an interview. <laughs> I thought you'd never stop blowing that horn. <laughs> Another glass of milk. Oh, oh that's what, you forgot your car keys. Another glass of milk. Okay, now, I, what I wanted to say, as soon as you're outside of the protected yeah, area... Yeah, I got the question. You're a, hero, <laughs> you're a hero, if you want to be or not, right? Well, there's only a couple of places that that sort of um, gets uh, to be superficially a problem, and that's mm -hmm. sort of Los Angeles and New... N not so much New York, and London is quite difficult to sort of uh, move around and mm -hmm. during, the, during the daytime. Mm -hmm. But um, that, that power that that, that gives you, is that doesn't... frightening to you? I don't know. As I say, I'm not, I haven't been in that environment for, for about a year and a half, two years. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't affect me. I live in a very different way. I mean, I, I move... Uh, this year, I've, I've moved on from Japan through Hong Kong, Thailand, back to Germany, uh, up to Switzerland. You live in one specific place? No, right now. I have nowhere. Right. Okay. Um, anything special to say about the number of heroes for the rest? I mean, is it... Uh, a hero for a day. It's a very pretty love song. Okay. That's interview number one. Stop it and present the book. Yeah, I've been doing it. You said Heroes is a pretty love song. Yeah. It says, uh, um, we could be a hero for one day. We yes. could be heroes for one day. Yeah. Do you want uh, people to feel like that just for one day? You said you're not, you don't feel yourself a hero. No, know? no. People make you a hero. No, they don't. For them. No, they don't. What you don't make me a hero. I know I'm not a hero. <laughs> what is the power of still going on? It isn't. Doing it. Doing. Nope. Making records, selling. Yeah. That's work. Just work. Yeah. Work in a way of life for me. Mm -hmm. In an interview a long time ago, you said, I could be a Hitler in England. I could yeah. make this country very big if I want to. Mm, I don't think I said I would make this country very big. Let me see what you said. You said. Could have been a, a hero. Um, I could make this country a great country. Oh, I don't know where you read that, but that's not true. No, but that's not true. It's a translation. I have the feeling that, I mean, we get all the press information about you, that's all we know when we yeah. start, right? I have the feeling you changed. You're just a hard-working, there's no, not much more of the image building around. No, at the moment, none at all. No, no I'm... Um, so we're talking to David Bowie instead of talking to the people... The yes, role, instead the of you characters, play. yeah. Right. Well, when I had the characters... Oh, can I take this off? Oh, sure. oh, no, I have to lose that one. Doesn't matter. After the first row. I'll just take off one half. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I was a character when I performed the other albums. Right. Aladdin, Sane, Ziggy Stardust, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and I carried the character through into interviews, into uh, newspapers, um, on stage, off stage. Uh, whenever there was media around, right. I had to keep those characters concrete because it was important, because it, the fabric of my work is using my body, my personality, as well as my songs and stage performance. Uh, the idea was to rather like a canvas. Mm -hmm. But now I've, I've finished with those particular situations, the hardware of science fiction in the beginning, the rockets and the moon and the aliens and whatever. And then there was the period where I was relating to technology upon society, as in the Diamond Dogs through to just before the station to station period, ending up with a plastic soul mm -hmm. character right. for uh, young Americans. Then the, young, uh, then the uh, station to station was a plea to get back to Europe. I mean, I had it in America, I was going crazy. So I came back to Europe and decided that I needed to um, discover for myself a new form of musical language before I continued writing anymore. So the last two albums, Low and uh, Heroes, aren't so much situations, but um, a, a process of discovery searching for a new um, language, artistic language, so that, that I can go further. Right. And that's what uh, Eno and myself and Frick have been up to, really. Okay.
That's the end of the roll you can take off your... I can take it off completely now, can I? En masse? No. It's impossible to care en masse. But the contact I have with a few that get to see me is um, very good. And uh, I take them as people, as individuals. I remember the uh, one lyric. All the nobody people, all the somebody people. Yes. I need them. Yes. Yes. Well, that, that, that character definitely did, because the world was exploding. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that was the character, that wasn't... That was, that was definitely a character, that was Ziggy Stardust. Right. And he uh, was the archetype, needing people, rock star. Right. Now, uh, to come back to that, the new album, the music to me sounds really a little bit, I hope that's the right English word, alienated. So I'm very surprised... Alienated from what? From, from, from... Oh, okay, from my world. From your world. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. right. you, can you understand that, or is that? Yes, I, I can because it's um, because it's new language. Um, would you like to know the process of yeah, writing? Yeah. That may help. Right. Yeah, uh, sure. Help understand. Um, side two, especially a side one, slightly different form of writing. But Brian and I would—that's Brian Eno, would uh, um, attempt to write in um, as many different processes and fashions as we could. Um, each, uh, the aim to be to discover this so-called language, artistic language. Um, and one of the processes that we used was that Brian would think of a statement that he wanted to make musically, and I would think of a statement that I wanted to make musically, and neither of us would tell each other what our respective statements were. And we would uh, uh, come up with a one foundational musical theme, that would be the foundation, and uh, maybe a chord sequence, or the, a number of bars, that would be in one, one um, key and a number of bars in another key. And that was our only foundation. Then we both go away and write about our individual statements, come back and both put down our recordings of what we were doing, right. and then listen back to it. <laughs> and it was phenomenal that we got a third piece of information out of it. Mm -hmm. A piece of information that neither Brian and I would, uh, knew was going to happen. No. So the album for us, all the time, it, when we finish it, it's uh, a surprise. A very, sometimes very pleasant, sometimes... You put them together and that's it? Yeah, there's no... Oh, and then, we, then we'll work up, uh, on, those, on those particular pieces of information, those two will sub... But we very rarely tell each other what we're doing. Mm -hmm. How long do you think you can go on writing in this, this way? Well, that's just one way. Yes. I mean, that, that was one, um, well, that's what I mean. The process has changed uh, uh, on just about every track. That's why it's such a, it's such a great variety of... of, of musical information on the, on the album yeah. um, because uh, the process was rarely the same for any, any two tracks. Isn't it surprising that in these days of young kids uh, buying uh, or being into punk and new wave and all that stuff that they, they buy your album and um, this kind of music in these amounts? It is, isn't it? Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> you're what can I say? No, no, you're surprised I'm, too. I mean, you I'm, I'm delighted. Um, but I'm very presumptuous because I'm, I'm also very biased. I consider that what we're doing is also part of a new wave or a new old wave. <laughs> you think uh, the whole the sale of the album, for instance, has still a lot to do with the hype around you? Um, I've not seen any hype. No? No. If it comes, it comes from you guys. I'm very happy. Thanks very much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's punk appeal to you? Um, I haven't heard punk. Um, I've seen a lot of punk. Mm -hmm. um, I've not heard the rock yet. Um, I've, I see a, a category. I see a, it's, there's the, the abstract art of the mid-60s. Uh, the, um, um, <laughs> yes, what is it? <laughs> That's better. Um, he's in the other room. The, the conceptual art of the of the um, the sixties that was something very akin to punk rock as a movement, I think, in as much that it wasn't experienced, it was theorized about. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that at the moment with punk, I think that a category has been created by the media, as always, and it's still a vacuum. There's n nothing filling it yet, apart from the two or three bands, maybe. Um, as far as the band's concerned, the ones that I've seen, uh, I've, I think there's an awful lot of enthusiasm among them, which I think is terrific. Mm. But it's, they're still sort of adopting a pose 
and trying to think of something dangerous to say, but they haven't actually got anything yet. Somebody will, I suppose. Do you uh, discover any talent already? Uh, Devo. Devo. Are you a man? We are Devo. Devo, an American band. Um, I've never heard of it. No, good. we won't have. Um, they haven't been recorded yet. They're extraordinary. Are you going to work with them? Yes, I'm going to produce them. <laughs> ah, right. I'm very excited about them. Now we get to Iggy Pop. Some people say it's pre-punk. or it, it has a new wave feeling already in the beginning of the 70s when he was with his mm. two cheers. I've got to surprise you. Come on, Jim, come out. <laughs> no. um, yeah, go on. <laughs> uh, he's, um, he's giving himself completely when he's, he's performing. Yes, yes, he's, he's scratching, doing everything. Very physically extravagant in his performance. You think that's, that's good for an artist? Um, Could you do it yourself, my, for instance? It's not my um, place to um, have an opinion on that, uh, on, on what Jim does. Um, I admire Jim very much. I like what he, I've always liked what he did. Um, and I wanted to be involved because I didn't think that people took him firstly seriously enough or, or, or didn't take him at all um, and which I've always had a, a penchant for the so-called musical underdog um, and the hardest part about working with Jim was getting other people in the music industry to take what he was doing seriously I mean that was really hard and now of course it's uh, it's happening but, uh, it's not my place to um, um, judge his performance because it's his performance and his music that attracted me to in the first place If you got a name that big as David Bowie, isn't it very easy for to to be a very big um, push on somebody? I think that's uh, I think that's a pretty naive sort of uh, attitude, don't you think? I, I, if it, if the, if it wasn't good, it wouldn't sell. I mean, if if Jimmy was no good on stage, people wouldn't go and they wouldn't get excited. Uh, if they did go, they wouldn't go again. They've been and they're going again because he is very exciting on stage and musically I mean as it is with all product like that in, in the, that's marketed through the media it, um, if the first one sells it doesn't necessarily mean that anything else is going to sell but they, they buy Jimmy's records because his music is bloody good you think you're powerful? you're, you're power crazy aren't you? <laughs> well lord no um, No, no, I don't. I don't see what I do in terms of power. I think um, uh, I'm a fairly good social observer, and I think that I encapsulate areas every, maybe every year or so. I try and stamp that down somewhere. What that year was is all about, rather than what it was all about or what it's going to be. It's very much, you know, that trying to capture the quintessence of that year is. And so it's an active performance all the way through the year because one's dealing with 365 days. So I, I may seem very active. <laughs> Indeed, I am. <laughs> yeah, I see that. You, you, were, you were talking about a, a trilogy of records. Yes, yes. Uh, is there still one to come in yeah, that series? Right. Yes. Yeah. Are you working on it already? Um, uh, yes. Uh, also, I'm going to America in a few weeks and um, I'm working on Robert, uh, Robert Fripp's album. He's asked me to do some work with him in New York. 